أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله من يهدي الله من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أكرمه بالنبوته وجعله رحمة للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي عباد الله أوسيكم وأوسي نفسي بتقوى الله O oh, servants of Allah, I advise myself first before I advise you to have taqwa of Allah, to be God conscious, to be aware of our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma ba'd, respected scholars, my elders, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There are numerous verses in the Holy Quran full of advices to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some verses, quite a few verses, more than 80 of them. It begins with, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. And Allah tells us to do certain things, to carry out certain acts, or to refrain from certain acts. But there is one verse which stands out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he praises this, that verse. And he calls it, how excellent is this verse that has been given to you? He says, he says, in Allah ni'imma ya'idhukum bih. This is uh, in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number four, verse number 58. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Allah ya'murukum an tu'addul amanat ila ahliha. Allah actually commands you that you return the trust to the ahliha, to those whom they are due, to those who deserve them, to those who are worthy of it. وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ And when you judge between people, make sure that you judge with justice. And then Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ نِعِمَّا يَعِيدُكُمْ بِهِ How excellent is that which Allah instructs you? And then he says again in Allah, the three in Allah indeed. In Allah kana sami'an basira. Indeed, Allah is the all hearing, all seeing, and the all hearing. This verse shows the importance that Islam attaches to fulfilling the trust and to be faithful in the trust that has been entrusted to us and in making the right and fair judgment. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that all types of trust be fulfilled or return to their rightful owners. This command refers to all things that one is expected to look after and fulfill and not just items of jewelry or money that has been entrusted to, to us. Now, what is this? Antu addul amanat ila ahliha. Ahl means the owner. And the first ahl is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Allah has certain rights over his servants and we must fulfill those rights. We have actually, actually we have undertaken ourselves and promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will fulfill these rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 33, surah al-Ahzab, verse number 72, Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ardi Indeed, we offered the trust to the heavens, to the earth, 
and to the mountains. But they all refused to bear it. They all refused to undertake it. minha, And they were afraid of it. But who undertook it? insan. It is insan that agreed to bear this trust. And then Allah describes about insan. Innahu kana zaluman jahula. Indeed, insan has proved unjust and ignorant from his actions. The amanat here refers to the trust which was entrusted to man as a khalif, as a vicegerent, as a representative of Allah on earth. The giver of trust, who is the giver of trust, is Allah. Therefore, expects the trustee, which is us, to use the trust according to the will and according to the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not otherwise this is a trust a trust of devotion it's a trust of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore we must remain faithful to this, to this trust as a vice parent on this earth the second ahl the second uh, owner of the trust is the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And his Aimma alayhi salam. These personalities are entitled to be followed, to be respected, and to be honored and to be obeyed. In Surah Al Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is Surah number 59, verse 7. Very famous Surah. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولِ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever the Prophet brings to you whatever he gives you take it and whatever he forbids you then you must refrain from it and then the next trust ahl obligation that we have is towards our family and our parents these are all amanat that we must look after lastly the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also includes the rights of servants on each other what they are entrusted with, including those trust obligations which are not recorded or documented. Somebody has given you a trust or you made a trust to somebody and nothing has been recorded. Must make sure that you fulfill that trust. Basically, it is telling us that you give people back the right which they deserve, what is due to them. If you are an, an employer, for example, you should give your employee no less than what they deserve. If you are a teacher, for example, you give your student what he deserves and vice versa. If we understand or if you understand and ponder over this ayah and live by it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly bless all your affairs and transactions in your life. Then we have our neighbors. We have forgotten our neighbors. We have been advised by our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our imma alayhi wa sallam. That we should look after our neighbors. Sometimes our Muslim brothers do not even know that our neighbors have right over us. They don't even know their names. Actually, our religion strongly recommends that we should be checking on them if they are all right or not. Especially in the month of Ramadan, for example. When we make iftar, you should give some food to your neighbor. And if, for example, they ask you why you are doing it, say, our Prophet has actually asked us to look after our neighbor. Huh? And what an impact it will have to our neighbor. And then you also ask them, if there is anything we can do, please let us know. If every Muslim was to heed this advice, I am sure all this Islamophobia and the stereotyping of Muslims by the media will definitely disappear if we were to observe this rule. The second part of the advice is وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ And when you judge between people, you should judge with justice. Supposing you have been appointed as a judge or arbitrator to settle a dispute between two parties or two people or friends or siblings 
or relatives. Your judgment should be fair and just. An tahkumu bil adl. Sometimes you may find yourself placed in such an awkward and difficult position that you have been asked to act as a judge or arbitrator and it becomes very difficult for you to make the right judgment just because the person who is involved is your friend or your relative and you don't know what to do. And this is a very difficult situation. But you have to be fair, you have to be impartial and give the right and appropriate judgment if you are to follow this particular ayah, no matter what the party is. That sometimes it so happens that it is the one that you don't like who has been wronged and it, is, it so happens that your own friend or your own relative may be guilty. Now let us look at this very important ayah in the Holy Quran. This is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Surah number 5, verse number 8. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'a bil Stand out firmly, remain firmly, be steadfast as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing justice, in dealing with people with justice. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا And let not the hatred or the enmity of a people prevent you or distract you from doing justice. Just because you hate somebody, but make sure you do justice. And then say, اِعْدِلُوا Be just. هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ And that is nearer to piety. That is near to God consciousness. Wattaqullah, be afraid of Allah, fear Allah. In Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Allah knows exactly what you are doing. We see in this verse the justice and taqwa go hand to hand. In another verse, and this is very important, Allah actually calls upon us to stand firmly for justice, even if it means that you have to go against your own parents and your own family. This is in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4, verse number 135. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Again, kunu qawwameena bil qist shuhada'a lillah. He said, oh you believe, stand firmly for justice, as witnesses to Allah. Then he says, walaw ala anfusikum, even if it is against your own selves, awil walidayni or your parents, والأقربين and your kindred or your near relatives. Sometimes it's very hard to say to your family or your relative that you are wrong and that the other party is right. You have to be bold and be just and, uh, and make a just stand when it comes to making judgment even between brother and brother. According to some commentators, this verse is actually cautioning and forewarning the Muslims about the evils which he had inflicted the Israelis. Due to their degeneration, when they started committing so much transgression and sins, what they used to do, they used to hand over positions of trust, of religious and political leadership to people who are incompetent, to people who are immoral, dishonest and corrupt. What was the result? The result was that Corruption spread throughout the nation. The Muslims, therefore, are being warned to take heed of this and to entrust positions of responsibility only to those who are capable of shouldering the burden of positions entrusted to them. The major deficiency of the Israelis was, was that they actually lost their sense of justice. They pursued their personal and national interests at the cost of honesty, equity, righteousness, and good faith. It is therefore obligatory for Muslims to declare what is right in the face, of, whether it is a friend or a foe, and judge between people with justice and equity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to live by this very powerful advice by remaining faithful to our trust and being just in all our transactions and affairs as stipulated in the Holy Quran. إن أحسن الحديث وأبلغ الموعد كتاب الله يعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد
لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد The Muharram commemoration rituals and traditions of mourning, they have been viewed by many, especially the extreme elements, as some sort of divisive act and as a kind of a declaration by the Shia community of separation from the larger Muslim community. Not all of them, but the majority of people. On the contrary, the mission of Imam Hussein at its core is aimed at protecting the sanctity and the message of the Prophet and subsequently the religion of Islam and the Ummah and disowning and rejecting a violent and corrupt entity claiming to speak as the Islamic Khalif. The Muslim world now and before have witnessed its fair share of brutality, ignorance and behavior similar to the dark age. We see that history continues to repeat itself. Another brutless, brutless, a brutal and ruthless character has taken upon himself as the Khalif of the Muslims. Practically the whole of Islam sees itself as confused and disunited in the age of ISIS. ISIS, or they call them in Arabic Daesh. Dawlatul Islam fil Iraq wa Sham. It is the influence of the Salafi Wahhabis and the destabilization of the Muslim world by the West that has given rise, rise to ISIS, the Neo Khawarij. I would call them the Neo Khawarij. The term Khawarij refers to a group that in 657 AD they broke off from the government established by the Prophet 30 years after his death during the Khilafat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. These Khawarij form their own identity as those who act according to the literal text of the Qur'an rather than through the guidance of the rightly guided Khalifs. They were known as Khawarij meaning those who have exited, who have left and anyone who disagreed with their viewpoint was regarded as heretic and they often executed them. You can see the uncanny similarities between the Khawarij and ISIS. ISIS is composed of thousands of fighters who are just as intolerant and as violent as the Khawarij movement of the 7th century. They have embraced their own puritanical interpretation of the Quran, rejecting any scholarly opinion of Muslim scholars and Islamic institutions. The majority of ISIS victims have been innocent Muslim communities both Shia and Sunni and also Christians in Iraq and Syria who have refused to pledge allegiance to this fanatical group. Let us see what is the similarity between ISIS and Yazid and what does ISIS have to do with Muharram. There were two main historical figures in the Prophet's household who fought injustice so as to preserve and protect the Muslim Ummah and the faith of Islam. Who were there? Imam Ali السلام, and Imam Hussein السلام. You can see many of the characteristics of Yazid in ISIS. Yazid was the Khalif of the Muslim Empire from 670 to 673 AD and led the government with a brutality worse than any of the world's most violent dictators. Yazid's use of terrorizing the public by crucifies, cru crucifying people and raising their heads on spikes are mirrored by ISIS. And these gruesome pictures, you can see them, they are all over the internet. Yazid did not hesitate for a moment to display and spread his brutality by parading the severed heads of the martyrs of Karbala. After murdering Imam Hussein salam, and his companions, oh, 
Yazid had the heads of the martyrs march from Iraq to Damascus at the tips of the lenses. Like Yazid, ISIS uses violence and intimidation to establish its claim for Khalifate. And similarly, like the Khawarij, ISIS takes advantage of civil war and the destabilization of governments. These neo-Khawarij have mounted extensive campaign to recruit around the world young disenchanted Muslims who have absolutely little or no knowledge of Islam. Through the terrible outcome of the West's war on terror and the powerful appeal of modern high-tech propaganda, the neo-Khawarij have been able to mobilize thousands of fighters from Chechnya to even California. The main ingredient of their recruitment is their projection of religious minority like the Shias as the impurity and the scum of the Ummah, Safrullah. According to neo-Khawarij ISIS, killing Shias represents a cleansing of the land. Thus, they attack all these uh, Shias and, uh, and, and others who don't agree with them, to, 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 who don't agree to their cause. It is important for the Shias at this juncture to realize the legacies of our 12 Imams. Who are they? They were advisors, they were teachers to the larger Muslim Ummah. The Imams consistently influenced temporal leaders and religious leaders of the time. Thus, the Ahlul Bayt were the source of commonality and a safe space amongst the Ummah and in the modern context. We should continue to use the example of the leadership of the Imams as a unifying force and not resort to actions which only serve to create discord and dissensions amongst Muslims. Ayatollah Sistani's recent fatwa on the issue of ISIS points out to the, an important fact in understanding the fight uh, against ISIS. One does not have to be a Shia to fight against ISIS. Sistani's fatwa addresses the masses to defend their country against the, an ideology of darkness. In such critical times, mourners should evaluate, we should all evaluate how Muharram portrays Shiism to the larger Muslim community and how Shias can improve the legacy and memory of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. <laughs> Imam Hussein alayhi salam stood not to create a sect but to uphold righteousness against tyranny. To uphold the legacy and, Imam, of, of, and memory of Imam Hussein, our Shia identity should be aligned with upholding justice for humanity and opposing all forms of injustice and oppression. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الذنب وقابل التوبه هو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته وغضبه وبسط اليدين بالرحمة سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا إلا دون وسعها وعفى عن السيئات ولم يجاز بها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد إلا كرما وجودا وعلى كثرة الذنوب إلا عفوا وصفحا نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد على المذنبين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمدا نبيه وحبيبه سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعم ومعدن الرحمة اللهم صل على سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وعلى إمام المسلمين وقائد الغر المحجلين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله عليه وآله وعلى سيدة نساء العالمين وبضعة خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد 
وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا صاحب الزمان ما حي آثار البدع والطغيان هادم أبنية الشرك والنفاق خاصد فروع البغي والشقاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آبائه الكرام من تصلت الليالي والأيام اللهم عجل فرجه وسهل مخرجه واكهل ناظرنا بنظرة منا إليه وجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه وتفضل على أمرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الإقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم افعل بنا ما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن أهله بجاه محمد وآله المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين اللهم اجعلنا ممن يتذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون